Hi everyone! Today we'll be talking about the moon. Today uh, there's a new moon, it's in Pisces, and it's in the ninth house getting ready to leave and enter the tenth house. Um, the moon affects me directly quite a bit, but it affects everybody on an emotional level. It rules your subconscious, and um, some astrologers say your past belief systems, your past well of knowledge from previous lifetimes is from your moon. So subconsciously, wherever your moon sign is in this incarnation is how you think and act. So, um, again, me personally, it's in the first house. And it's a kite chart, so my moon literally pulls all of my other planets. So the moon for me, I'm a slave to my emotions. So I've studied the moon extensively, and I wanted to share a little bit about that. Okay, so it's the first day of the new moon. Every about two and a half to three days, it changes signs. So in about another two and a half days, um, or two days really, because it started, I think, last night, um, it'll move to the sign of Aries. So each zodiac sign the moon is in determines the energy on an emotional scale. So right now, if you were to think about, okay, the moon is, it rules our emotions, it's already water, it rules the tides. Um, if it's in the sign of Pisces, Pisces is about dreams, it's about spirituality, it's the most psychic sign. Um, it's union, unity, it's Neptune energy. So maybe on an emotional scale, you'll be more watery, you'll be more emotional, you'll be more withdrawn and, and want to meditate and go inward and go out of body, traveling in other dimensions, either through meditation. Um, escapism also rules Pisces. Um, it's a very otherworldly... Uh, energy because Neptune is pretty much the furthest away from the planet so it is very cosmic and it's far away so people that have strong Pisces are very far away people they're very awesome <laughs> creative um, visionaries inventors painters poets musicians um, so that's kind of the energy today New moon energy, however, is completely different than full moon energy. New moon is is about going inward. It's a dark moon. Um, if you're a woman, you should absolutely research the moon, especially. Everyone has emotions, even men. But women especially should research their connection with the moon. Um, okay, so... New moon energy, a very, very good time to go inward and to stop and to slow down. It's a manifesting energy. It's a pulling towards you energy. For the next two days, I always make a point to, to meditate a lot, even for a few hours. Either go out in nature, sit under a tree. It's a great time to write. Write a manifestation list. Um, there's a lot of new moon and full moon rituals. But New Moon um, is pretty specific with the pulling towards you, the manifesting. So I always write a manifestation list. So it's writing every single thing that you want to manifest for that whole month. And wherever, um, what zodiac sign the Moon is in paints the picture for the entire next month. So because it's in Pisces, the energetic imprint is going to be Pisces for the entire next month, regardless of what the sun sign is in, which is moving from Pisces to Aries, I think next week. But again, we're going to have this Pisces painted picture for the next month because the new moon is in Pisces. It's starting that new period. So I write down every single thing that I want. And um, when it comes from a space of the heart and you want it and you feel you deserve it and it's not for selfish reasons, it will most likely manifest. If you write a bunch of things that are basically self-centered and greedy, I don't think the universe may give them to you. Or they may. But I like to get really, really grounded in what it is I want to manifest for myself for the next month. Whether that's achieving goals, whether that's bringing 
um, people, places, and things in my immediate environment that I need, whether it's an actual tangible thing like, I need a new hairbrush, or um, I need more food, or I need to believe more in myself, I need to strengthen my power, I need to feel more powerful, I, I would like to get rid of the word need altogether and say I would like or I already have. Because when you're manifesting, it's really an awesome idea to not only write down what you would like to manifest into your physical reality, you then visualize that thing that you want. So for example, if I um, believe that I would need a few extra hundred dollars for income to pay some bills, I would write down that that's what I want, and I don't care where it comes from. I have multiple streams of income flowing through me and to me easily and effortlessly, all those, you know, mantras. But I would then stop and I would literally visualize and feel emotionally already being financially content and having that money come through. Because it's really powerful. That's like the ingredient. That's like the what seals the deals for manifesting is feeling that emotion of already having that thing. Because you can write down all day long what you want and what you need, but if you don't visualize and feel what it feels like, then you're not going to really attract that. Because the feeling, that vibration the on the emotional realms is what magnetizes things to you the quickest, is feeling. So when we have experiences that feel bad, and we keep feeling them over and over, you're basically shooting out to the universe, I want more of that. So it magnetizes. But if you feel the emotions of gratitude, if you feel the emotions of having enough, of feeling joy, of being thankful, then you magnetize that to you. So why wouldn't you take the time out to feel what you want to manifest? But it takes time and it takes work and magic is magic, but magic takes work. Um, and magic really is just intentions mixed with visualizations and feeling. But anyway, old magic's coming back. Okay, so to back up a little bit, um, back to the moon phases. So it continually grows. So starting from the new moon, it's a brand new moon. And then it grows and grows and grows and grows. And in two weeks, you got a full moon. Full moon energy is about letting go. It's heightened creative sexual energy. It's when the most rapes and murders occur because the energy is, it's, our inhibitions are, are gone. It's, we're in a heightened state of emotional, we're, we feel full emotionally, full of creativity, full of sexuality, full of vitality, full of energy. So we're just full of this, this energy. And so, um, it either comes out in a healthy or just or a destructive way depending on where you're at within yourself so full moon ritual wise is a great time to let go it's a great time to really feel fully what you have manifested into your reality from the previous new moon and now see what in your life isn't working for you whether it's thought patterns um, addictive behaviors, relationships that aren't working, um, a job that you don't like anymore, um, anything in your life that is not working for you and that you wish to let go of or you you know that you need to let go of, like if you're a smoker and you need to quit smoking, doing letting go rituals are amazing when the moon is the fullest or between the two, the two and a half to three days where it's full because then after the two and a half it starts shrinking back to the dark moon and then the new moon and then the night sky is completely starry sky all over again but anyway it's an amazing time for letting go rituals um, what's really helpful as a woman or otherwise is to see what moon phase you were born in that determines your power moon meaning that's where you feel the most powerful and in alignment because that was the phase of the moon you were born in for me personally i was born on the fullest day of the moon so every time it's a full moon and i work with wolf spirit energy i howl at the moon and i feel very free and in alignment 
And then what you would do is um, do a ritual around your birth phase of the moon to really honor yourself, honor your emotions, and to celebrate yourself because we do not celebrate ourselves enough. Um, the other thing you would do is look at what zodiac sign and house your moon is in. If you don't know, go to an astrologer. If you don't want to go to an astrologer, you could literally go online to astro.com and look up your free natal chart and see where your moon moon placement is and what house. Um, I was actually going to read off just the natal moon. Okay. So moon and the signs. Moon and Aries. Aggressive spirit, temper, quick reactions, spontaneous, direct, inclined to impulsive and quick temper. Feelings are keen and intense at the moment. Courage but foolhardiness hides a sense of insecurity behind an independence and aggressive exterior. Poor judgment jumps into action from feelings rather than from reason. Makes friends quickly, but often finds it difficult to keep them because of emotional instability. In a male chart, attracts a dominating woman as a partner. By the way, this book is freaking amazing. It's uh, Astrology of Cosmic Science by Isabel M. Hickey. You can get it on Amazon for like 20 bucks. It's an amazing beginner astrology book, and it goes in-depth into everything. I highly recommend it. Okay, so the next energetic um, moon sign is moon in Taurus, which is exalted, meaning it's even more powerful. So strongly centered on material plane, because Taurus energy uh, strongly focuses on the here and now, the third physical dimension, and the senses and pleasures in the body. So when we're talking about Taurus energy, that's where the emotional um, realms come from in that person. So a particular person with Moon and Taurus, again, strongly centered on the material plane. Money important. Has devotion and persistence. Emotions strong. Much charm. Beauty loving, because Taurus is ruled by Venus. Pride and stubbornness strong and sensitive, resourceful in difficulties. Tremendous desire for security. Desire nature strong, good-natured and an attractive personality, not an aggressive as a rule. Fixidity is not apparent on the surface. Instinctive response to all emotional impacts. In a male chart, this describes the type of feminine he attracts. She would have an attractive personality and be a loyal type of partner. Now we're going to Moon and Gemini. Moon and Gemini people, versatile, shrewd, and critical. Dual forces in the subconscious. Again, the Moon is the subconscious. Superficial, because it is the 12th house sign of Cancer. Moon ruled. Again, the Moon is... The, the ruler of Cancer is the Moon. So, because it is the 12th house sign of Cancer, Moon ruled, can be own worst enemy. Needs to be honest, restless in search for truth. Needs to look beneath the surface, longing for knowledge. Spread themselves too thin and scatter their forces. Jittery nervous system, because Gemini rules the nervous system. Torn apart by changing feelings which reflect in nervous tension. Too strong a tie with relatives, because Gemini also rules relatives, especially siblings. Not a free agent if they cling too long to family pattern. And a male chart attracts a nervous and high-strung mate. Now, moon in Cancer, which is its ruler. Too sensitive. These people are very sensitive. <laughs> too sensitive. Must not react to feelings of those around them. Subject to moods. Easygoing and sociable. The need to mother others very strong. Everything experienced held in feeling memory. Introverted on subjective levels. Conservative, operates in a deliberate social way, can be carried away by tides of emotions, far too sensitive in response to environment, can be psychic, and a male chart would attract a feminine more mother than mate. Moon and Leo, me! A accents personality causes tendency towards display, leadership qualities proud and easily offended, 
must be center of attention. Self-sculpting, sorry, self-sculpturing necessary. Must learn to govern emotions, wants their own way, and do their best to get it. Strong affections and a nobility about them. Ambition and a drive for security strong. Subconscious desire to be someone in authority. Money more important to them than one might think. Power drive but on a hidden side. Keen and enthusiastic interest in life. In a male chart would attract a positive and dramatic type of feminine. Moon in Virgo. Apt to want to be considered superior intellectually because of a deep-seated inferiority complex. Reserved in expression. Very critical and analytical. Very Virgo. Not very loving. Apt to be cranky and fussy about minor de details. If afflicted, bickering can become a mania. Irritation leads to bad health and this position can give indigestion and nerves due to negative emotions caused by the desire to perfect everyone else, which is a very Virgoian trait. All their stress goes right to their stomach. And what is on my screen? Okay. Strong desire to serve people but not enough understanding of other people's feelings. In a male chart would attract a quiet, reserved, and shy type of mate. If Moon is afflicted, she would be critical and apt to nag. Moon in Libra. Gentle people. Elusive sweetness masking a masculine strength. Ambitious but independent too. Home ties are very important. Unconscious motivation to be undisturbed by any friction, but peace at any price is hard to to achieve because the masculinity of Libra. Not apt to stand up for principle if Mars isn't strong. For they want to be liked by everyone, so they will fight blindly rather, rather than intelligently. Need for purification where motives are concerned. Need to be honest with themselves as well as with others. And a male chart attracts a positive type of feminine that will want to run the ship. Morning, sorry, Moon in Scorpio. Morn, morning. Yeah, that's definitely Scorpio. Morning. It's fall. It's in a fall placement, meaning the moon doesn't do so well here. In the house of death and rebirth, or the energy of death and rebirth, rather. Dominating and aggressive, impatient and moody, given to brooding, easily hurt and can be jealous. Impulsive desire is the motivating force, strong pride and will. Intensely passionate in response to life, sets ways, sorry, set in ways and very stubborn. Apt to be disappointed in love. Apt to demand too much and not give enough of understanding. Sit in judgment on others too quickly. Greatest need to learn to forgive and forget. Strong physicality, sensual, extremist in temperament. Strong deep feelings, but they need handling. Needs to achieve an optimistic attitude towards life. Go after what they want and usually get it, and then find out it's not what they wanted in the first place. In a male chart would attract a possessive and jealous mate if Moon is afflicted. A magnetic feminine. All right, halfway done. Now we have Moon and Sagittarius. Wants to feel free to roam. Restless and lacking in, con in continuity. Needs fixed signs to anchor them. Philosophical. Friendly and optimistic. Wants to help others but forgets. If afflicted to Jupiter, too, extrava too extravagant. Faults are those of overdoing, not underdoing. Keen love of sports if aspected to Mars. The gamblers of life. Not apt to have many close friends, but not many acquaintances. Sorry, but many acquaintances. I know how to read today. A feeling for religious philosophy, but not dogma and creed. Loves to roam. I think I already said that. Needs to learn to think before speaking. In a male chart will attract a freedom-loving female. Direct and talkative. Moon and Capricorn. Detriment. Meaning it sucks here. 
because Saturn is restriction. Capricorn's ruler. Moon and Capricorn, again, poor place for Moon and especially so for a female because it restricts emotions. Works against itself, conservative, strong, ambitious, power complex. Security of subconscious lies in authority. Contest is bred of life. Wants to win recognition as an important and powerful person. Needs to watch tendency to harden ego complex and a shell of self-centered ambition. Not a happy person as a rule. Rigid and crystallized feelings. Not a truly sympathetic and emotional person. Parental influence very strong. Subconscious fears need to be brought to the surface and dissolved through understanding. And a male chart attracts a serious and quiet type of partner. Moon and Aquarius. Progressive. Can bring difficult lessons through erratic and ill-considered actions. Good minds, but erratic and unstable. Much originality of thought if it can get out of a rigid thought patterns. A very cold feeling nature because of not understanding other fellows needs. Aquarius is a mental sign not an emotional sign at all. Feelings are cramped and limited and do not operate freely. A strong selfishness behind a friendly manner. Often has an arthritic conditions in later life due to rigid will and crystallizations of emotions. And a male chart attracts a fixed and stable partner that cannot be pushed but can be coaxed. Hmm. Moon and Pisces, last but not least. Visionary, dreamer, romantic, sensitive, emotionally poisoned with a divine contentment that nothing of this world will take away. Poetical and mystical if unafflicted. Makes a great gentleness in the person but doesn't help in a worldly sense. Good for musicians and artists, for this gives a great, greatly heightened sensitivity to light, to life. A great sympathy for the underdog. Suffering through the emotions for the position of the moon is difficult. Needs to strengthen the will in order to withstand the impact of negative vibrations from others. And a male chart attracts a sensitive and sentimental feminine, not overly physical. All right, and that concludes the moon through the houses, a brief um, energetic explanation of what your moon and what sign is about. Um, there are so many different topics about the moon. Um, I mean, there's so many different like areas we could talk about expanding upon the moon. One, for instance, is uh, moon cycles in women. Some women are full moon bleeders, some women are new moon bleeders. If you work in a workplace with lots of women, whoever the alpha female is, everybody entrains with that woman and starts bleeding on her cycle. Um, women seem to switch between uh, new moon and full moons sometimes. Um, but the moon, again, it controls the tides of the water. So what does that say symbolically for us if we're all the universe and everything is all one? Well, we're about, what, 87% water? So when the moon controls the tides, it controls our emotional body. So depending on if it's a new moon or a full moon or everything in between, she has about eight faces, that's where our emotions are going to be like and depending on what um, zodiac sign she's in in the sky. So again right now we're in a new moon in Pisces in the ninth almost tenth house. If you look at the ninth house it's ruled by Sagittarius which has, which has to do with higher knowledge, expansion, um, philosophy, spirituality, traveling. So maybe a lot of us on an emotional level will want to travel because it's a mixture of the Piscean energy of the sign it's in, plus the house, which is Sagittarius ruled, is the ninth. So we have a mixture right now between I want to go deep inward and meditate and dream and do art and music, mixed with the ninth house, which is how the energy plays itself out, which is deep philosophical higher expansion conversations. So anyway, that concludes a little bit about the moons phases and the energy of the moon in general and there's tons to look up about the moon and if you're a woman especially I highly recommend you 
study the moon and the phases of the moon and your zodiac placement of the moon. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.